Hello there. My name is Tathan, and I have a passion in making video games. I feel like it brings all of my favorite things together, like storytelling, uh, music, programming, and, well, playing video games. I work a full-time job as a quality assurance tester at a company called Xperis. In October, the company announced that they were going to start hosting game jams for us workers as an opportunity to grow. Well, obviously, outside of work hours. I was so stoked about this I knew I had to join. In this video, I want to take you through my experience with our first game jam. The time frame for the game jam was about a month and a half, and the theme was the good old classic balloons. I had a lot of ideas at first, one of them being a rail shooter of some sort. Uh, I'm working on this other project that's a rail shooter, uh, but this one would have been something simpler and themed around balloons. My second idea was a 3D platformer slash collectathon about collecting balloons that would upgrade a hot air balloon. The more balloons you collect, the higher you could go on a map and you could explore all these sky islands and use your movement to overcome platforming challenges on each of these sky islands. But I quickly learned that the scope of that idea was a little too great for this, it was a little too big, but I was set on doing a 3D platformer. I had never made one before, and I wanted to have the challenge of trying to make one, so that's what I went with. For the first whole month, I focused on just the gameplay mechanics. I knew that if I didn't have any levels to play, or if I stripped I stripped it down to just the mechanics, it had to be fun to play. It, the character had to be fun to control. It's a, it's a 3D platformer, so that's what I needed. I spent a lot of time making sure that the jump felt good, floating around was fun, sliding on a trash can was fun. I just wanted to spend as much time as I needed to make sure that the core mechanics were good and fun. So real quick, let me explain how the mechanics work. You obviously have your jump button and your double jump. You press the jump button in the air and you'll do a double jump or a balloon jump. But if you held down the jump button while you were in the air, you would float. If you press the attack button while you were on the ground, you will do a sort of slide attack or like a dive attack. If you are in the air and you are moving, and you press the attack button, you will also do the dive attack. But if you are not pressing in any direction and you press the attack button, you will slam down, thus stopping your momentum so you have a little bit more control of your airtime. These simple mechanics cost me so much time, but it was worth it. Because it was honestly just fun running around and jumping and slamming down and floating around. I knew a little bit about this, but I learned a lot about vector math in this project. Vector math is a little complicated, but it basically just means that this plus this equals this, except in a 3D environment. Wow! For the character design, I don't know why, but before I even started having ideas for the game, I knew that I wanted to do a raccoon. For some reason, when I thought of the balloons, the balloon theme, a raccoon came to mind, so that's that's what I went with. I used Blender for all the animations and texturing, and for the first time I learned the built-in texture painter from Blender. I'd always done the textures by hand, um, but the only textures that were done by hand were the eyes. Blender is just so nice to work with. Level design, I think, is my biggest weakness in game development. It's really hard for me to put my ideas in action when it comes to making levels. For the first grassy area, I wanted to make the player be able to mess around with the mechanics, so it's a pretty simple area with not too many obstacles or challenges. For everything else, I decided to take someone else's approach. After doing a ton of research on 3D platformers and what makes their levels fun, I stumbled upon the Game Maker's Toolkit video on Koichi Hayashida, sorry if I messed that up, his four-step level design. This design was put in place to make it easy to implement level mechanics quickly. The steps are teach a mechanic, develop that mechanic, twist that mechanic in some way, and then throw that mechanic away. I think I said mechanic too many times. In this little icy area, you can see it. 
that I implemented this design philosophy. In this first area, the player learns that balloons jump you up and will refresh all your resources like your double jump and slamming down and your float time. Here, there are no consequences. You can learn the mechanics without worrying about falling off. In the next area, I further develop the mechanic, the balloon mechanic, by taking away the training wheels. There are areas where you can fall, it's a bit more dangerous. This next area, this third section, sort of twists that mechanic by removing the ground altogether. The stakes are high, you might have to restart a couple times to get it, but overcoming this challenge will make you feel good. And then these last three balloons is sort of a throwaway for the mechanic. The player can just jump on the balloons and it'll launch them up to the next area. For the audio, I used FL Studio to write this one song that plays during gameplay. I tried my best to make it not so annoying in the limited amount of time I had left because I was working on this song in like the last week and didn't have a lot of time left. The slamming down of the trash can lid and the balloon pop were both sounds I got from freesound.org. The voice of the raccoon is actually a little bit of my voice acting edited to sound slightly higher pitched. I am not a voice actor and this is my first time actually trying. Uh, let me know how I did, uh, cause I don't know. <laughs> now. There was a lot I wasn't able to get to. Like I mentioned earlier, the scope that I had for this game was a little too much for the time allotted for this game jam. And I spent a lot of time working on the core mechanics. It didn't leave me too much time working on the course as a whole. So a little bit after the icy part, I was not able to focus as much on those levels. And I think that the quality deteriorated a little bit on the latter parts of the course. Another thing I would do better for next time is find time, no matter what, for playtesting because it's super important. I need to, I need feedback, otherwise there's no way I can improve the quality of the game. For the most part, I did everything in this game by myself, but what, there were some assets I used from other people. I'll credit those people and assets in the description. I'm not a YouTuber, but I'm going to make more games, so if you want to subscribe, stay tuned. Otherwise, whatever. <laughs> My next project isn't necessarily a game, but I want to challenge myself and sort of expand my skills. I'm thinking of making a fan mod for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, um, but we'll see how that goes. If I do it, I'll definitely be making a video. And with that, thanks so much for watching. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.